Well, in the matter of full disclosure, I have to say that I'm standing on a box. <laughs> this is the real Amanda. <laughs> but Durant brought such wonderful plants, and they're so vigorous and fun that I'm going to stand up a little bit um, just so that we can enjoy them more. And Durant, um, it is Native Plant Week, and you enjoy, I know that you love to walk the woodlands in this yes. reedy river and, mm -hmm. and, and get inspiration there and always have. And there are now varieties that have really been selected to fit in and Act, give people a yard that looks like a traditional landscape exactly. using native plants. Exactly, and that's one thing that I would like to mention to all native plant aficionados. Um, so many people think, oh, these are nice plants, I need one of each, and I'll put them all out through my yard, and the next thing you know, yes, you have native plants, but you have native plants that look like a jungle. So the design principles for landscapes are the same, whether you use native plants or traditional plants, contemporary, historic. You still want to use your designed techniques that create a pleasing landscape. And one of everything doesn't do it. One of everything doesn't. It really doesn't. But, let's but talk about I want everybody yeah. to know the availability of these plants yes. that can be used in the same locations that you would use Chinese and Japanese plants, which have their merit. Yeah. But um, still, we have numerous advantages to using the native plants. Well, let's talk about some of the ones you brought in. Let's start yeah. with this larger one that's right out in front of the Th counter. This is Tai Tai, and Tai Tai grows in the swamps. Cirilla is the genus. Cirilla mm -hmm. racemiflora. And um, I've known Tai Tai for a long time and have never seen a pretty one growing in a swamp. However, in the nursery, grown in the nursery setting, you can get quite an attractive shape to Tai Tai, and it can be used as a foundation plant. And I have one in my garden that's at, on the border of a more wooded area and what I enjoy about the one I have is that it's aging it's getting kind of a contorted shape that's very, it very It will get beautiful. a graceful oh, arching I habit of growth. I think it's lovely. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And it has those beautiful little um, heath flowers, um, very attractive to pollinators when it blooms in the spring. Right, and, right. Um, and I've never the, had a problem The blooms with are beautiful, beautiful on Tai Tai. Quite lovely, yeah. yeah. They, they are but this one, um, you say you use it as a foundation plant. I do. You can use when the house accommodates one of that size. That's right, mm -hmm. yeah. It'll get about six feet tall. A beautiful plant. Mm -hmm. And then next to it, just one that we have to love for its name, if not for its beauty. Well, this is Zenobia. Yes. Zenobia pulcarima. Um, Zenobia is the last plant to leaf out. It's deciduous. It's the last, last plant to leaf out in the spring, and it's the last plant to lose, it, lose its leaves in the fall. It will actually turn color and drop its leaves in December. But, you know, it's got a color even... Now, the, the mature, beautiful blue yes, is as it hardens off, it is a beautiful blue, but it, it, beautiful fall or December colors as well, yellow, orange, and red. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one that striking. is a little bit particular about sighting, I believe. Yes, that's true. Now, you think of native plants as being hardy, hardy, hardy. Well, Zenubi is not the hardiest plant of all. It grows a native wild in the coastal plain of South Carolina in good sandy drainage. soils with good drainage. So anytime that I plant them in the upstate, I use a berm, a topsoil berm, or a mound so that you're to plant have them good, up. Good, good drainage. Right. Yeah. Okay. Guaranteed good drainage. Blueberries are, of course, just the go-to backyard fruit. And this one is a new one that is just but, you know, blueberries it's, it's are not great. necessarily beautiful around your house, well, necessarily. Well, this one but is, this though. this one is. Yes, this is great, great to use around the foundation. And uh, it's evergreen. Now, it's a native evergreen dwarf blueberry. What I mean, just exactly. For? Full sun, gets two feet tall, two feet wide. Um, What's the, the cultivar? Uh, Rosa's Blush. And why is that? Well, the new growth comes out, you know, rose-colored, um, and then it hardens off to green mm -hmm. and then turns blue. So it's got all those colors at once going on And we on can with see that plant. on this right, one. It's still right. got some of that beautiful... Tons of interest. Yeah. Now, it does produce blueberries, and if you have a bowl of cornflakes, you could maybe have one meal of the blueberries that you would harvest. But it's nice for wildlife. Out. I love to let the birds have it. And again, um, pollinators enjoy coming to it. Yes, they do. I enjoy having... I have one of those in my garden. I enjoy it very much. Much. It's a lovely color. It's and great. I like one. to watch it. And then this is a beautiful look. Look at this precious little <laughs> bloom. How sweet. This, this is a ground cover. Uh -huh. It's a white wood aster. And it grows, it spreads. It'll spread three feet um, and get about 18 inches tall and blooms white in the fall. And this one you said we would find in the forest. Yes, you would find that in the forest, but you can bring it into you know, the residential landscape, mm -hmm. use it under an oak tree, for instance. 
Um, or if you have a woodland setting. It will spread. Yes, it will spread. Wouldn't that mm -hmm. be lovely to take a stroll and see that out, of, <laughs> out under, the, under the tall, sh high shade? Right, Perfectly right. beautiful. Wonderful. And then people think that things have to have flowers in order to have color, but um, look at the color we have here, not a flower in sight, although right. there will be flowers at some point. Yes, the flowers here are inconspicuous, but this is uh, heuchera or coral bell. The variety is black beauty. Apparently, coral bell and heuchera can be hybridized and uh, mixed and matched to no end. And this is a hide item in uh, horticulture circles Well, these and days. you know, one of the fun things about this is you could coordinate, you could get a cool colored pot and put this in it and have a focal point and never yeah, need a flower. That's true. That's true. And this is plant. evergreen. Mm -hmm which is another major advantage. A big plus. Right. And then, oh my gosh, isn't this fun? Yeah. It surely is. Um, that is coneflower, and this particular variety is from a seeded mix. It's called Cheyenne Spirit. It's beautiful. And you can yellow, orange, uh, purple, red uh, colors. And is this one that establishes pretty well in perennial? It does as well. As? I have had most success with this than, than any of the coneflowers. With this mix, yeah. Right. And it is a beautiful one. And I think even after the petals fall off, it's still attractive, but I believe the birds are attracted to it. The birds just it. love those seeds. Mm -hmm. um, uh, finches flock to them like thistle seeds, yeah. and uh, they just, they love that. And this looks like fireworks <laughs> going off, which is great fun. That's true, and uh, you know, this would be in an informal setting. This is yes. silver aster. Silver aster. Right, uh -huh. quite attractive uh, blue foliage, and of course the asters bloom in the fall. Uh -huh. You wouldn't just use one of these. Now this is something you would want to use in mass. Uh, at least three, mm -hmm. um, and maybe ten. Um, but for a meadow type setting, um, for a border, for a woods edge border, mm -hmm. this is something that would do very well. Yes. And um, again, would you in the fall? Do you do you cut these back and let them come back the next year, or do you let them stay woody? You know, when you're dealing with native plants, you just let them kind of do their thing. Mm -hmm. Now, an aster, any plant that blooms in the fall, really should be cut in half July the fourth. That, and if I had done that with this plant, it the would be nice and tight, yes. uh -huh. not loose and open like this. But, but you know what? It's still pretty. And well, we when, it, it. when yeah. it comes to native, I kind of let it do its, do its thing. thing. Okay. And then next to it, we have a plant that often is way too big to use, but I think this is a new variety, or too, too big to use right around the home. Right. And this is a Lakatha weed, mm -hmm. um, grows uh, native to the mountains of uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, and other places as well. But this one is Margie Jenkins Lakatha weed, just grows three feet tall, three feet wide. If you need a shade plant, a foundation plant, this would be a yeah, beautiful and, one. And I use that as a foreground plant as well. Do you? Um, okay. If we used the uh, Florida anise down there Which as a right foundation here. plant, yes. right, and then as a foreground plant in front of the anise, the Margie Jenkins Cothway yes. works great. Plants, right, yeah. right, right. And the Florida anise has the great advantage of, this is the smaller version that's mm -hmm. a much larger, but this there one is. tops out about six feet, okay. four to six feet and tall. And of course that one, if you brush the foliage, you get that wonderful refreshing. <laughs> the foliage of, has a wonderful kind of licorice, anise yeah, aroma. Anise yeah, 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 just wonderful. Sure does. And then I think right down there, a little bit shorter, we Mount have Laurel. just the most wonderful and beautiful of all plants in my book. Uh, Mount Laurel is a win-win plant. It's in sh it's shade. Mm -hmm. Greenville County used to be covered in Mount Laurel till we decided, you know, we can make too much money planting cotton. Uh, so the stands of native Mount Laurel are few and far between now. But at one time, Greenville County was covered in. And Mount do you know Laurel. we have a lot of Mount Laurel on the sandy soils of Fort Jackson. Um, there are little subspecies. Yes. So depending on where you are, um, right. you can have mountain. Don't think of Mount Laurel as just a mountain plant because it occurs all over the state of South Carolina naturally. And I know it grows on the Alabama Plain yeah. uh, quite quite as well. Yeah. Well, Duran, I want to thank you so much for showing us some of the variety. We have sun plants, we have shade plants, um, we have um, this plants that um, are going to be. Um, herbaceous perennials and then um, deciduous perennials. There's a lot out there and we need to start exploring the native plants more. There is a native plant for every situation. It's how you fit it in. You don't just get one of everything and throw it in there. You design it, you lay it out, establish a focal point, frame the setting, um, continuity, harmony, uh, and you also have to take care of my new plant as a new plant, be it native or not. That's true, okay. too. Yep. Grant, thank you so much. Sure.